All right, so now what we need is an object that we can work with. Now I want to use something that's not Blender's primitive and not something that I've made because you won't be able to follow along. Now with the primitives in Blender, yeah, but I, I just want something a little bit more complex and something more relatable. On the blender.org site, let's go to download. Then we go to demo files. And this is where, what we're after. Basically, we're just going to use one of these primitive heads here. A face with ears, eyes, tips. So what you need to do is hit that. And it's going to download. Don't worry about this. You can see it downloading right there. So wherever you have this downloaded, you need to extract a file, the Blender file and the other information along with it. And I already have it, so I'm not going to demonstrate it. And extracting a zip file should be pretty straightforward. If you don't know how to do that, there's plenty of places where you can go to find that out. And once you extracted that file, we'll get started. Okay, so now I'm going to open this file. And this is going to be an on a um, unorthodox method of retrieving what you want from this file. You can add it to Blender's asset library and stuff like that. But as I told you, I don't use that very much. So I'm just going to do it the long way. Get rid of some of these areas. And basically what I want, the one I think I want is this one right here. So I'm just going to select all those and you just delete them. Don't worry. We already have the file. So the original file is not going to be affected. Let's check that out. That's good. Okay. So you remember control a, the apply menu. Well, what we, what we want to do is clear the rotation location and scale. And we want to put it in the center. So we hit alt G that's one that clears the location. And you could just leave it like this really. But we can go further. Alt R is going to clear the rotation, but I don't like that, obviously. So let's apply the scale. Control A, apply scale. Now this rotation is still off. So if I go Control R, no, no, sorry, Alt R, that is out of whack for some reason. Don't want that. So let us or R just move this rotation around a little bit. G X drag that down. So I have to apply this orange or this origin point to where I want it to be. So we're going to go shift S. Oh, it's this menu. Let's see. I'm closer to world order and let it. Shift S again. Nope, I don't think. Yeah, I don't really like this pi menu for this. And I thought I had it already. Oh, I'm, actually, I'm tripping. I'm thinking that I'm in uh, my Blender version. So anyway, let's look at where the camera is. Okay, way over there. That's fine. So I'm just going to leave this be all this like this. But I'm just going to go ahead and um, Alt G this. And we'll get to applying the rotation later. Then I'm going to hit the dot on the numpad to bring that up so we can see what's what. It says cams in here, 17 cameras in here, yada, yada, yada. We don't need to deal with that. 
So I tried to delete them, it didn't work. So you have to do things a long way sometimes. Basically I'm just clearing this folder or this file because I just want the our head here. And there we have it, just the head. So it's four modifiers on here. No, I'm sorry, it's four um Actually, it's like rigging. Now it says five. So I'm gonna, gonna get rid of those. Well, those are the eyes. Oh, I forgot that there are multiple pieces. So if we hit G and grab, you see it's multiple pieces. That's what it is. So what we can do is go into wireframe, left drag to select everything. Then I'm just gonna hit control J. That's gonna join all the meshes into one mesh. And there we have it right there. And I'm just gonna rename this You don't have to do any of this. All we want is the head to append into Blender. All right. See the origin point is right here. All right. Now, because I'm not able to do anything with this, hold on a second. Let's go into edit mode. Okay, that's, that's okay. I forgot about the modifier that was on there, the multi-resolution modifier. That's fine. Okay, that's good, that's good. And we'll we'll get to this other stuff later. So let's hit Shift C, put the cursor back in the word origin, and let's just save this file. Name it, save it, whatever you want. Um Blender Rio real head doesn't matter save that there we go let's make sure it's on the desktop there we go and we can just get rid of this and i'm going to put this back in the folder right there then i'm going to open up blender okay of course, we're, we can get rid of, now why did this, why is this appearing way up here? I don't think I'll put it right there. So let me just check something else. I got baking right there. I just made a new workspace and made some other changes and stuff like that. So I'm just checking because I don't remember putting this up there last time, so. Just put that there and I want to change this to Eevee. Okay. And of course we can, we can delete the cube now or later. It doesn't matter, but let's bring in our head, go to file, go to append. Now link and append are pretty similar, but they're different. The link will allow you to link whatever objects you have from another blend file into your blender file that's open. And I think you can actually edit the meshes and stuff like that. And I think so, but this is like a good idea to use the link because it's going to act as a prop. You know what I mean? So it's going to just reduce time for rendering and stuff like that. But we won't append. What a pen is going to do is going to, it's going to make a copy and import it in, into Blender. So I'm going to go to desktop and there's a head right there. You have these other options here too, for you can, so you can see. I'm going to hit append. Then I'm going to go to object. Double click that. And let's see, I'm not sure which one this is. I think I should have named that. I should have named it something else. So down here you see it says 
the part of the eye that's right there. And I thought I deleted all that, but that's fine. So I'm just going to get that. You know something? Let's just get both of them. And a pen. Just going to get this out the way. And there we see it. Right there. You can get rid of the cube. And it looked like it made a copy. So let's select and grab. Yep, it made a copy for some reason. But that's fine. Let's check the modifiers. Okay, there's a multi-resolution modifier set to 1. I'm just going to get rid of that. Now, I don't remember Shift D in this. But you see one copy has the eyes in it and the other copy doesn't. That's fine. So let's just take advantage of that. Let us hide one of them. Okay. So I'm just going to rename these and I'll get back to you. So anytime you see Alt slash, that is my screen recorder activating. So that, that has nothing to do with Blender. All right, so I renamed them. Let's go here. No, not collections. Well, yeah, we need collections too. But let's go right here and right there and, and enable those. So what we want to do is put this, drag this, left drag, put that into a collection, make another one, and put that into another collection. So we can turn that one off. And we have the one with eyes. So I, I'm going to name these later, so that's fine. Okay, what we need to do now is set things in place. Go to item. Select it. Let's go. Let's try control R. And you see it does something weird. And there we have that issue. Yeah, it happens. So what you can do is hit the dot on the numpad to bring it back. Let's see. Let me just see something real quick. Okay, it's editable. Okay, there's a motorcycle turning on, so I'll get back with you. Okay, it's off. Let's go to view. I'm going to set that to 110, the clipping distance. And you see the clipping start is just way too big. Let's set that back to 0 0.01. There we go. Yeah, we just have to go through these issues one at a time. Let's see here. Let's control Z all that. Okay, to right there. And that stayed the same. Okay, Shift S. Nope, there is that again. So I thought I had this set earlier. So let's go to Wazoo Pie Menu. Let's find the Shift S. So I didn't have a set. Okay, Shift S. Okay, much better. I just like the way this looks. Okay, Shift S. If not, you can always find that stuff up here. I think it's set origin. Yeah, set origin. Um, origin to geometry. And the origin point is right there. If you want it right there. Let's see here. Or geometry to origin. Nope. So let's just apply the scale and see what happens. Control A, location. Okay, that drops the origin point right there. Control A. You see rotation is cleared out. It's no longer 90 degrees. Control A, rotation. Good. Control A, scale. There we go. All right, now that we have that set. Let's see here. There is kind of lots to cover. So let me turn the other one on and off. Let me take a look at the eyes here. Let's go into edit mode. 
Okay, that's good. Alrighty. I think we are set. Now, I hope you're able to do the same thing. Let me hide that again. Bring that back. So what happened now? Let's select that. Okay. Sometimes that happens. That's okay. No modifiers on this one. Okay. So let's do that. All right. So I'm going to rename these off camera and let's make sure everything is scaled properly just in case. Hide that one, bring that one back. Okay. This is the one that's, that was throwing us off. Control A, rotation. There we go. And, okay, that will do for now. Okay, so actually let us hide this one. Bring this one back with the eyes. In case you have this issue, in case you got two of them, or in case you just have this one with the eyes. So let's separate the eyes from the mesh. And what we're gonna do is hover our mouse over the eye, just click once and hit L. Then we may have to get in there. And don't forget, I have my viewport focal length, the clipping set to 110. This is what really allows you to get close. And you can also get inside, get inside. So just select that one. And we don't need this side because we can just mirror the eyes over here. Then we hit P to separate the selection. And in order to activate it in edit mode, we have to go back to object mode and select it. G to grab. Then we go back into edit mode and now we can edit it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this and you see it made a copy over here. Okay. I'm just going to, I guess I'm going to hide um, all that other stuff. And there's our basic copy. And you see when I set the edge seam color to yellow right there. So it stands out really, really good. Okay. I'm going to go into wireframe. Let's see if there's anything on the inside. Nope. Nothing on the inside. Back to solid. Back to object mode. And right now I'm just kind of organizing things. No big deal. So we'll call this one eyeball. Okay. Then we'll hide that. Let's bring back the head and I'm going to delete this part and I'm going to delete the other eye. Go into edit mode, hover your mouse over, hit L, hover mouse over and L and hover again. Maybe we can get that other ones, that other piece. And I did grab it. G so we can move out, take a look. Yep. And right click to put it back in place. X and just delete um, anything you want. It just faces. Now you see we have an issue there. So what happened here? Hover L, hover L. Okay, so it selected it all. Looks like it's just a part of the um, I for some reason. No worries. X, delete vertices. Now this part of the eye is called the eye bag, just like the mouth bag. Then we can go over here. L. Now don't forget I'm in vertex selection mode. Then go to vertex right there, edge right there, and face right there. X and just delete vertices. 
There we go. Not bad. Not bad at all. So basically we end up with pretty much the same thing as the other other one. Okay. Looks nice. Alright. Now what we want to do is or basically what I want to do is show you how to check your geometry because there is some interesting geometry up under here. All right. So let me just move this to the side real quick. And what I'm doing to get this is holding down control and metal mouse and just dragging in and out, in and out. So what we need to do is go up to mesh. No, no, no. Select. And I'm going to go select all by trait. Now this is the other option you have to clean up your mesh other than mesh length. If you remember, let me move the microphone closer. Sorry about that. In case you hear it, just select faces by sides and it's selecting everything for the time being. So let's go down here to this um, box here and the number of vertices is set on is four. That means all faces that have four sides is being selected. But let's check the bottom. Don't forget, you gotta check everywhere. And you see that right there. These large areas are faces and they are not four sides. Now the vertices mean how many sides that they are. It's just that simple. So I'm going to increase this number to five right there. Number of vertices. Let's go six, maybe seven. There we go. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right in this area. And it's eight. So there's eight vertices right here. One, two, three, et cetera, et cetera. Eight on this side, eight on this side. Same thing over here. Now, if I come back here and set this to three, and I don't think there's any triangles on here. Oh, I think there is. I think it's on the ears right here. Unless my eyes are deceiving me. So let's just take a look. You can hit the dot on the numpad to zoom in a little bit. Don't forget you have shift B. Zoom in right there. And yes, we have two triangles. Basically four, two on this side, two on the other. And that is pretty much faces by sides when you select. I'm going to hit Alt-A to clear that, and we will continue. Let's go to Face Selection. And you know something? There is a big whoop about triangles versus quads and even endigons. And you know something? You just have to figure out that for yourself. You know, I don't mind leaving triangles on the model. Just depends on where it's at, and as long as the shading is not compromised. Now, if you can get your model, the topology to be all um, quads, then yeah, more power to you. And this qualifies as a quad, even though it's more diamond shaped. And even these rectangles qualify as quads, even though they're longer. And if you can get your quads to be the same size all over your model, then you have more power to you. And that's what remeshers do like add-ons and blender has a quad remesher. Okay. So let's left click on that right there, that triangle right there. That is. So maybe you want to turn this into a quad. Now you can add a loop cut right here with control R, but that edge is going to go all the way around there like that. 
and if you want to add a loop cut right here it depends on where it's going to go so we'll start with this one back here I'm going to hit Control r and you see it goes that way move the mouse it's going to go up and around left click once left click twice and let's just see where it goes that's not too bad now here it looks like one two three four five so this was an end gun that we didn't catch this is why you have to examine your model really carefully so we're gonna patch this up I'm gonna go into vertex select select that one and that one then I'm gonna hit J to join Control Z that if you hit F to feel you're going to get a different effect sometime because the feel is more for when you have blank geometry. So if I go into face select, select that and you see the feel key just goes over because this area needs to be blank. Control Z, Control Z, Z. So go back in the face select, select that. X, delete face. Back in the vertex select, select that and that. Then we can select this and this and hit feel. So this is feel. That's the biggest advantage right there. Go back. Well, not go back, but select those four and hit feel. You see how tiny the vertices are? And like I said, I thought I had set this properly. And let's go to themes, 3D viewports. Yeah, it's set to size five, but it's just coming in so tiny when I get close. That's interesting. Now, yeah, that's better. Save preferences. Come back to layout. There we go. There we go. Much better. Okay, let's look at this one right here. Pretty much going to do the same thing. Control R. Add a loop cut and you see this loop cut is going all over the model. It just depends on where you put your cursor. And you see it down here in the lower left. You see those squiggly lines. Yeah, Blender does that sometime, but it doesn't actually mean that's what you're going to get. So I'm going to left click and you see it disappears. Then left click again to put it in place. But we don't want that. Control Z, Control Z. So let's see where it goes. Left click, left click, okay. That's pretty okay, but it's going all throughout the model like that, all over. And sometimes when you add loop cuts, they can just go just all over the place. Control Z. Let's see if we can find another spot. I wonder about the inside about, um, I wonder about the inside of the ear. Control R. Okay. It went all the way around, but it created another triangle. And sometimes you just can't do too much in certain areas. You can only do the best you can do. But we may be able to do this. Nah, that's going to still leave a triangle right there. So what I was going to do is select these. Um, let me do something. Let me think about this real quick. Select these. Hit join. Let's get rid of that. X. Delete vertices. And let's see what we have. Now if you do what I just did. When you... Hold the mouse wheel and it goes kind of out of whack. Just make sure you select something first. 
and all we want to do is patch up this area so it's all quads. So let's see, what can we do? So let's go to Edge Select, right up there, and then we'll hit X and we will dissolve this edge just to see what we have. Let's add a loop cut through there. Let's see how that looks. And it's going all the way around there. But you know something, I may leave that be. But let's undo that and see if we can find some other way. So I may have to reconnect those vertices right there. So we can make a quad right here. Fill. Oh, there it is. There's a quad right there. Fill. Now we only have this area to solve. Hmm, interesting. Let's just go ahead and fill that back in or join them together. Okay. And it kind of depends on where you have your um, triangles and endigons. Now, some place like this is not going to be seen in the ear, so that's the, these are the best ways to hide your geometrical issues. You just put them somewhere where they're not going to be seen. Because how many animations have you seen? 3D animations and any animation for that matter, in which you get up close and personal to the character's ear. Not many, next to none. So I guess we'll delete that right there, but let's just add a loop cut right there. Let's see where that goes. Yeah, that's too much. It's a fine line between adding geometry and not adding them in too many places. You know, it's, it's just, that's just part of the game. So let's see what happens if we run a, run a loop cut along this area. Control R, left click, left click again. That looks okay. So let's go to Edge. We're going to select that Alt, left click. Uh, it looked okay, put it like that. Now, if you want to leave things like this, that's fine. I mean, that's an interesting selection. Want to leave it like that? That's fine, but no, nah, I don't like that too much. So I'm not gonna make a big deal about it too much. Just leave it right there. It's a small triangle, so it's not a big deal. So you just had your first taste in how to possibly clean up geometry. You can see how the edges here are just too close together. Yeah, that's not cool. I mean, you can leave it like that if you want to. You know, it's your motto. You can do whatever you want, but that's kind of like not cool. So let's all select that one. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of that. I thought I did get rid of that. Oh, well. Hit X, dissolve edges, and that looks a lot better. Okay. So next thing we want to do is... After you make changes like this, just doing anything simple or complex. I didn't mean going out of mode. What we need to do is select everything and hit M and select by distance. We're just going to remove doubles. Double vertices that could be on top of each other. And I should have showed you this earlier, like one of the first things, just to make sure the mesh is clean. And it is. And in case you're wondering why I dip my mouse down, it's just to make sure OBS is running. Now, you don't always need to go into sculpt mode to be able to, like, uh, make characters or make adjustments to a model like this. You could use proportional editing. 
So I'm going to go into Vertex Select. Doesn't matter. You can stay in Edge Select or Face Select. Going to select one. Hit the O key. That's going to activate Vertex Select. My trusty tool. I'm just going to pull that out. Circle of Influence is too large. Control Z that. And I'm just going to hold Shift. Left mouse drag to control the influence and better increments. Still too big. Now it's probably because our object is too big. Let's get that down to about 0 0.04. Let's see. There we go. Or we can cross our body to roll the middle mouse wheel up and down. There we go. And guess what? You can make changes to your model like this. So it's not always using scope mode. So let's say we select the exact same vertex over here. And let's see, which one would that be? I think this one. So now we see the median point is activated. So let's just move that up. There we go. Not exactly even, but oh well. This is just here to show you the options you have. So let's scale the cheeks away. So hit S, Z, I'm sorry, S, X, and just scale that away. We can make changes like that. Now, if I had the mirror modifier on, then it would just do the same thing I'm doing on this side on the other side, but I just don't have that on yet. Great for character modeling, control Z, control Z. Say you want to do something with the forehead right there, droopy. Oh, nice. Let's say you want to make a character, a lady that has more predominant cheekbones. Maybe you want to bring this part of the cheek out like so, that's, that's okay. Maybe you want to make the ears a little bit more bigger. And you see everything is moving within the area. That's more of an alien. Hit the three key, go to side view. See if we can make some adjustments to the nose. Yep, so much fun. Just like so. Control Z all that. And you don't have to be in orthographic view, flat view. You can always just have a look like right here. And you can hit the G key to grab out so you can get a better view. So let's say we want this area to be a little more out. So let us left click this. Roll that middle muscle down a little bit. Just pull this area out a little bit. See how that is? Nice and simple. And that is pretty much proportional editing. Control Z, all that. Okay. So you see how these edges are pretty close together. Now Blender does have a way, default way, that you can um, even this geometry out. So let's go Alt, left click, select, and it's gonna select the whole loop, okay? The whole line of edges. So what we need to do is hit GG, and once again, let's turn off proportional editing, GG, and it's gonna slide these edges. Same thing here. You have to see where the edge goes. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna hit GG and slide them right along there like so, and just make that a bit more even. Now this is the long way. Now you see that I selected this one and it selected all these right here. That's interesting. That's new. 
And I will tell you, I have never worked this far on this model. And I was preparing for this tutorial and I was just looking at some things, but I didn't even get like 10 minutes. So this is the first. That's interesting. Let's do that again. Same thing. So we have to select these like one at a time. So just select those GG slide them around. Okay. Let's undo that. Till we go back to what we had originally. Okay. That's it right there. Now this is the manual way to even out your geometry. Okay. GG. And this is why you want to work low poly because if you need to even out your geometry like this, it could take forever. GG. Yep. It could take forever. Now there's an add on that I was telling you about earlier. Let me see if I have it enabled. Yes, it's enabled. It's called edge flow. Edge flow is still working for 4.1.1 .1 blender. And what that does is selecting, I'm going to select now. Nah, this is okay. That's fine. What I'm going to do is select that. And I do not have anything in my quick favorites because I started this file over for this tutorial. But as this course builds up, I will add things to it. So edge flow is going to appear in the edge menu down at the bottom where it says set flow and watch what happens to the edges. They just even up. So like that, and then we can hit shift R to repeat the process of the last major thing you did. Shift R. I'll select that shift R again. So, okay. What's going on? So let's do this one. Okay. I'm just going to do this manually. There we, there we go. So shift R kind of worked, but shift R does work. You know what I mean? Anyway, so let's just take a random edge right here. As long as it doesn't go all over the place and go edge set flow. And it just tries to average out the edge between other edges. If I control Z that and you see the difference, then shift control Z that then control Z. And there is another way to do that as well. What we need to do is go into scope mode. So However way you want to get into scope mode, be my guest, go right ahead. And we have these face sets on here, which is not a big deal right now. There is a way to get rid of all that if you want. And I'm going to go into wire. Let's see if I can find it. Is it this one? Yeah, that's fine. Then we're going to go over here and select the slide relax brush. Oh my goodness. This is one of Blender's baddest brushes ever. What it's going to do is allow us to even out the geometry. Now the brush strength is set to one. So let's just take a test at this. We're going to hold shift. Well, shift. I was control. I'm just going to left mouse. You see it's slowly moving things. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Let me tell you something. This is a fabulous tool for when you are retopologizing. I mean, absolutely fabulous. See how things are even and out, even though this mesh is pretty even. When it comes to the topology, it's just good to show you this. 
So I remember there was a project I was working on and I could not get that topology. It was okay. But then I used the um, slide relax tool on it and I had a field day. I was so proud because it was just one of those things I had to figure out how to overcome. Look at that. So I'm not doing much here. I won't, it won't get every everything. Well, it will, but it's just as, you know, some areas may be good enough as is. And, you know, I'm just showing you this because this model's topology is good enough. Okay, that is slide relax. If you want, you can make the brush bigger. Maybe too big. Let's just take a look. Hold shift, left drag, and you see it's kind of lagging a little bit. You see some things just take a lot out of Blender. Look at that. I'm just going to do any old thing here. And obviously, I'm not going to bother saving this because the topology is not even... Okay. So this is acting like a, it's like a brush that smooths and you can control the um, topology. You can possibly do this with a smooth brush. But you see the smooth brush is going to flatten things out. I mean, it's going to smooth it, but it's not really going to maintain the volume of your mesh like the slide relax will. Now, that happened because I did not have shift. I did not hold shift. So if I hold shift, there we go. Yeah, and that is another way to even out your geometry, especially after you retopologize. Look at that. Isn't that neat? And there is a mirror that you can add to this. I'm just not doing it right now. This is just a walkthrough. So let's say I did add the mirror. X right there. And you see the mirror right there, no big deal. Okay, there we go. Like I said, I'm not gonna bother saving this because it's a little bit too messed up. That's fine, let's go back in object mode and let's change that back to not wireframe. All right, so I think I'm just gonna delete this even though we made those changes in the ears, that's fine, no big deal. I'm gonna hit X, delete that. Remember, we still have another one right there. And I'm going to save this and yeah, I think we will keep going. I'm gonna clean up the outliner real quick. Well, actually, let's make a copy of this one. Shift D, drag it out and make sure it's a copy. Then right click it back. Then we see we have the copy right there. Just, well, I should have left that on there. So I'm just gonna put double one on it. That's fine. And then we can just hide that, make it not selectable. And you can save this any way you want to. You know, I'm just doing this walkthrough, so I'm not really going to worry about saving too much. And when you save, one very, very cool thing about Blender, it's, it's so cool. When you save your file, depending on where the camera is, that's how you're going to see your um, file, right? That is so neat. So that's hit zero on the numpad. 
and I have camera hidden, but I've enabled it now. Let's select the camera and just use the middle mouse wheel. You see, sometimes this happens. It's just not really lagging. It's just, I really don't know what this is. Put it like that, but we're going to go control G sets that back in place. And you see Blender is lagging on me a little bit. So I'm holding shift and not that again. I always do that. I'm holding shift, hold the middle mouse. And you see it's trying to pan it over here. It's just taking too long for some reason. I don't know why. So we select that. Then we go Alt R. Then we go in the three view and you see it disappears sometime. And I'm glad this happened. So let's go dot on the numpad and there we go. Let's go back to three and hopefully it doesn't jump out. So let's hold R for rotate, then hold control to snap. Snap that right there for so it's straight. Let's go G, Y, bring that back. Now, sometimes this doesn't always work for the camera when I grab it like that. I don't know why. Then we hit zero again, and now we have our model right there. So when we save it, we'll know exactly what's going on. You can go to the camera settings right there, but make sure camera is kind of selected. And we can adjust focal length right there. You can hit G, X, move the camera this way, anything you want. So I'm just going to leave it right here. And I'm going to save this file. I just go control. I mean, I just use save as. And let's just save this. I'm going to call this real blender head. Doesn't matter right now. Save it to the desktop. Click out, out, click out of that and save as. And now we take a look at the desktop and you see it right there. Nice. This is so cool about Blender.